Speaking of books that we probably don't spend much of our devotional time in, the book of Lamentations is one filled with lament over sin to God. And I love this idea of lament, how Latasha Morrison puts it in her book about Be the Bridge, that she talks about the idea that lament is almost as if we take our pain and we look it straight in the face without our urge to turn away. I wonder when was the last time you lamented over your own sin? See, it's this funny balance of wanting to rest in the grace of God, knowing that it's available to us, but that also we would want a sensitivity to our own sin, recognizing what it did to make the gospel necessary. And I love the story of David for so many reasons. He's an example to us in a lot of ways, not of perfection, but we know he was called a man after God's own heart. Not because he was the most like God, not because he was the least sinless person that ever lived, but what I love about David is that it was more about the fact that his orientation was towards God. When he strayed, when he sinned, his orientation was to turn back to God. And we obviously see him having written most of the Psalms that he talks regularly about lamenting over his sin and asking God for mercy. Psalm 51 is a classic passage that we read often when we talk about this idea of lamenting over sin. David says this, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. See, he goes on to lament over what he has done. And this is actually in light of the sin that he has transgressed with Bathsheba and, and Nathan confronts him. And so what he does is he continues to go on saying, Lord, I know the standard that you'd put before me and I know what I've done. And I'm asking for mercy and forgiveness. And he continues to go on and ask God to deliver him, to, to blot out his transgressions, to cleanse him of his unrighteousness. And he says this at the end, you do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. I wonder for so many of us how much time we spend maybe wanting to offer some sort of sacrifice or service to God in light of having done something sinful. But what he reminds us of here is that God asks for a heart that is broken over our sin, that we would be heartbroken over our own sin, but that our response would be to turn towards God, that even as Hebrews talks about that we can approach the throne knowing that we will find mercy there, we approach it with confidence. But will we also approach it with a broken heart over our own sin and ask God for the mercy that only he can provide? And so my challenge to you today is to, to maybe recognize a, and, and acknowledge a lament over your own sin, ask God even for a sensitivity to it, and that we would ask for a heart even like David, that we would be oriented back towards the only one who can provide us mercy and grace and ultimately show us a different way as we seek him and his righteousness.